what in the world is Buddhism about? And we tend to say, well, if you don't know anything about it, we start with the Four Noble Truths. And so I'm going to start there with the Four Noble Truths here. And I'm going to say, suffering. Then I'm going to go cause. Then I'm going to go cessation. And we all remember about the doctors, you know, person suffering. Let's take a look at it and see what the cause of it is. And then I know what the person looks like if they have no illness. So this is the cause. And so how can I get the person to be healthy? And that's the way to the cessation. They remember that you can always remember it. And the next thing that happens is we, we, we understand from following the suttas so much that Siddhartha develops this, um, these four noble truths. He took them and he used them as an investigation path. And you may have heard me talk about this before as an investigation path. And his path, the way that he was using this, he was looking at suffering, then looking at the cause of the suffering, and then trying to go back and say, if that was the cause, what is the cessation? That's how he figured out dependent origination, where we showed you in Samyutta Nikaya, he intellectually figured this out. So we know this was his intellectual path intellectual path and his actual path, his med meaning meditation path. Okay. And then he used his meditation observation tool this is so how do you figure out everything he had to have a way to actually see it in order to become awake so he tells us about how he used meditation and he teaches his monks how to use it the same way he did as an observation tool. That becomes his microscope. And this microscope, at first we think it's, well, it's, it's a good way to look inside. We don't think it's that great until we begin to see consciousnesses and infinite consciousness. And then we think, oh my gosh, he had an electron microscope way back then. He actually figured out how to have an electron microscope. So when we bring a person into TWIM, if you've ever been to a retreat with Bonte or me, you know that the first night when you first come, we give you an orientation for the location where you are, and we teach you a set of basic things. And we're going to talk about it here first, but then we're going to keep, I'm going to give you the list of exactly what they are and why this stuff works when we teach it. The first thing we teach you about is the being. And we teach you the being is composed of five aggregates, the body, feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. And then the next piece we show you is that body has six sense doors. And the next one, because you have those six sense doors, you can have contact happen in your experience in this life, in this existence. And when contact as comes as condition, feeling arises. And the feeling, there's three kinds. And we show you it's painful, pleasant, or neutral, but we tell you uh, three kinds, there you go. 
um, that you really can get all the way to Nibbana with pleasant or painful. You don't have to worry about this neutral thing or this neither pleasant nor painful feeling till you get way advanced and then you can start understanding it's not the same as neutral, but it's impossible to explain it to you in the beginning. And then what we show you, he, ta he talks to you about this feeling, the when the feeling arises, what happens then is and this is like Dr. Poonaji talks about, that's where you actually create this part here. And you are creating what? You are creating I here. And what happens with feeling as condition? Craving, I crave, I crave, that's a bad crave. Let me do that again. I crave. And that means that I like or I dislike. But he's in total agreement with us when we talk about this happening this way. Uh, because from this whole section back here, I, I always put it on the charts when I build the charts. I make this anything that has to do back here with the dependent origination this is all green having to do with the actual cognition happening that means it's part of your body and you personally don't have anything to do with making a feeling arise or making contact happen or making a sense door operate or um, the process of your con consciousness involved in the six sense doors and contact and perception it's all part of the body it's part of the body so you're not, there's no I until it comes right here. This is where everything changes into a red one instead of a green one. And what craving as condition clinging happens. And what clinging does is clinging to cling is like another gear, another more powerful, faster kind of craving. It's mental proliferation. If I like something, clinging is, why do I like it? I like it because blah, blah, blah from the past. I liked it or I didn't like it and here's why and I remember. And so it's the story about why you like or dislike something. So once again, I am there. The next one is the habit, habitual tendency and these you know we always keep changing this every year we try to say something else but <laughs> habitual tendencies is what we started with and bawa is actually a library in your head of your personal reactions you've always done in the past and you pull one up and then what happens is the birth what happens next is the birth of reaction the birth of reaction happens all the time when you have an untrained mind. Once you have a trained mind, know more about what's coming, what's what's happening in the process of your experience, you would start to have a response instead of a reaction. So we could say that there is a possibility of a response. That's what you're working towards. You're working towards changing these two, you know, getting rid of reaction and making come response. So this whole thing back here, the whole thing is actually, this is cognition that we're talking about. And we're only talking about the pieces in dependent origination that first night, you actually do hear about dependent origination, but you don't know it because we're not telling you that. We're just showing you how an experience happens. So what happened to the Buddha when we go back to him? Uh, he realized that he realized a change. 
Oh, he realized. <laughs> yeah, okay. He realized. That's the he is the Buddha. He realized um, to change. He had to have a system. He had to have some kind of a, he, he had to have a practice. And in his case, he had to change his practice. He began to understand it wasn't quite right. What he had done with Alara Kalama and Ramaputta didn't work, didn't go far enough. So he knows he has to change. And he's as he's going along, he's trying to figure out, he's, he's not always thinking about it, he's practicing. And he actually stumbles on it. And we think he actually stumbled on it the night that he woke up. That's what Bhante and I really think, you know, we've talked about it a number of times, but nobody really knows, but it could have been that fast because of what it was. And where is it? Majima Nikaya number 36. Uh, you go to that one and you go into section 30 and start reading there. The whole front part of that sutta is talking about the things that the Buddha tried that did not work. And essentially that sutta is him speaking to, the, to this person explaining all the things he tried and it failed, so don't spend time on it, is basically the message until you get to this point. And at section 30, everything changed. So then he had to change. To, in, to change, he had to change his practice, his approach. There was something, something wasn't working. So the next part is um, he realizes that um, uh, when we're practicing, when we come back to us, you know, when we come back to us and we talk a little bit here, we say, you know, with us, um, with us, we know, we need to change from reaction to response. And the world would be entirely different if we did that. So when he's looking and he's watching what's happening inside and everything, um, he has, he realizes that he has blockages. He realizes there's blockages. We have to go back here. He realized there are blockages. And blockages during observation blockages during observation cause unusual internal movement of mind's attention and the, the movement is going to the hindrances. And you can call these distractions. There's a lot of names for these in the sutta. We can call them hindrances, um, disturbances, distractions, blockages, obstacles, and obstructions. There's like 11 or 12 different words we can find on that. Then... What happens when this is going on usually is observation stops. It's 
Observation stops. And so he called these, I'm just going to put an H, these hindrances, he called them imperfections. And that's the one I, I like the best because it's not accusative in any way. He called these distractions imperfections. And as he studied them more closely, as he watched, and that's what you are, you're being trained to be a watcher. And as he watched, craving occurred. Craving occurred. when the eye is invented every single time this is where he began to see at in a totally and he, he noticed it's in i is invented to personally like or dislike. Like or dislike. And move forward faster. So it, it starts with a feeling and the feeling's painful and I don't like it and then I don't like it because and then you have this energy happening here with the habitual tendencies really fast. It's like jumping in and grabbing a card out of the card file and then giving birth to the reaction. That's what's happening to us. So the question that arose this week was how do we reach the right condition, okay? okay. How? Do I'm going to get this guy to go up here. How do how do we reach the right condition? There was one line I didn't write. Right condition. And this is key right here. I'll tell you why in a minute. How do we reach the right condition to fall into cessation? Okay, so this is like a track I'm taking you on. Okay. And this goes on like this. And and then come to um, I'm sorry, then come out, come out to experience. Anybody has a question about that, they need to ask me when I come back to you guys, to Nibana. How do we reach the right condition to fall into cessation and come out to experience Nibbana? Now, see, I'm going to put a stick a note in here that every level of understanding you pass through
you reach a condition fall into the next to the next. So how do we reach the right condition to fall into cessation? People ask this all the time and come out to experience Nibbana because we're showing you how that works. And when I come back, if anybody hasn't seen that before, I'll draw it for you really quick. So this has something to do. Yep. This has something, he knew this, something to do with how he began to practice, which was um, with the practice of right effort. With the practice of right effort, uh, right mindfulness. Now remember what we say about mindfulness in our training. We don't say mindfulness is paying attention to something, but um, the mindfulness is our, our observation power. It's our observation skill, we can say skill, because it's very particular, the, this skill. Um, and has something to do with the practice of right effort, right mindfulness, our observation skill, and this is productive, I'm gonna say it this way, productive, uh, collectedness or concentration, whichever word you want. But the key word, the key giveaway here is productive collectedness or concentration. Okay. And um, so it, it comes back, comes back, comes back. to the six R's, okay? And you keep six R'ing until you are in quiet mind. Now, all of the problems that you have on the way to the depth of quiet mind, which is basically gonna happen in nothingness and neither perception or non-perception. All of the problems that you're gonna have have to do with what I was discussing with Sarma about his mind. Mind is trying to play trickster and trying to stop you from getting there when you get to the deeper, it can be very quiet, you know, when it's in infinite space, you might notice, or it can be very quiet in um, infinite consciousness because there's something for you to discover, something for you to watch and experience, and you're into that, and, and it's curious too, and it's just there, but it's not, it's not trying to trick you at all. But when you get into nothingness, then where it really starts getting <laughs> where it really starts getting trickster is where like halfway through nothingness you've been frustrated because why because there's nothing there and every place else you've been through this practice there's always been something else you know but there's nothing there one person got stuck there for 5 years Another person was stuck there for three years until they finally got it, that there's, you're supposed to be exploring this place called, that no one's ever been to it before, and it's called Nothing Land. And you're supposed to come back and tell us, what is nothing? <laughs> this is frustrating. But, that, but you're just supposed to observe. And if you can relax into that and just watch, no matter what, just keep watching. The rest of this is going to keep happening because, frankly, when you got into first jhana, 
that's when you op you sort of fell in the river and or in this near falling like falling in the stream sort of but this you're falling into river inside of you something is moving forward even if you stop practicing for a month or two and come back after you've been in the jhanas a couple times you're going to feel that you're starting further ahead than when you left and you're going to wonder why is that happening well it's because something has opened up inside you and wants you to keep moving in that direction and this is all very natural. It's all part of who we are. So you briefly, the important part is when you're in quiet mind, it gives you a chance to discover something and, and really confirm in your mind with, so there's no doubt in Sarma, this is what you should, you should try to do and relax in your practice as you're relaxing. Where you, the steps of right effort are to, um, you know, to recognize that there's a change in tension. And then I like to say, just never mind it. Never mind. And when you say never mind, you let go. And then you relax. And right here, right here, before you smile. As you come back. What is that pink thing right there? What is that? This right here, it's not a bad color, isn't it really? Let's make it yellow. What is that? It's quite, it, it, is, it is pure mind. That is still point. We call it still point or pure mind. And the, when, you can, when you can see this, when you, when you ha notice it, and you don't really get to sit and watch it or anything like that, it's just really quick. But when, once you realize there's a tiny spot here, it's, it's how big is it? Well, it's this big maybe the size of a tip of a pin. That's pure mind. But if you are very quiet and you have been letting everything go and you're very still, when you look between that relaxed step and, and the smile, just kind of watch. There's nothing there because when you relaxed, you let go of all the craving and there's nothing starting again until the smile starts over here and the observation again. So there's a space. That is pure mind. And when that still point happens, that is your confirmation that the state of cessation is real. And when the Buddha figured out that was real, this watching, this is where he probably just really let go to see what else was going to happen. And then, boom, and this kind of thing, this kind of state, it doesn't happen in a lot of practices where there's any concentration that is causing any tension in the brain at all. This is one of the reasons like when you let go, you should always remember letting go is not relaxing. These are two steps. This is one and this is the other one. And the second one takes apart and drops out the residual leftover tension that didn't happen when you just let go and let it fall away. There's a tiny bit left in your head and that's what the relaxed step is about. Okay, until you are um, using quiet mind and you briefly experience the still point, you realize clear mind, so you return, you relax, you smile and you come back. Now, um, so this is how you're preparing the practice of the uh, release, you know, you know, the letting go, relax, smile, and come back. Recognize, let go, relax, smile, come back. That's the principal guts of the practice. And then just saying, repeat this, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, is encouraging you to not pay attention to anything, anywhere, anyhow, just nothing. And just keep doing that. It will take you through to cessation and you'll fall in cessation, okay?
say you pretend there's a clock. And this is the clock. And on this clock, there's a 12 and there's a three and a six and a nine. Okay, now what we're trying to demonstrate is all the stuff we're talking about and the place where you're attempting to go to into cessation has to do with the six. So what we ended up putting on the six was this is where, where cessation is going to happen. So I put cessation like this. The arrows are pointing in. This is cessation where everything shuts down, turns off. And how does it happen? What is the preparation, the, the, the condition that has to happen for that? This is where the strongest equanimity is developed. And you are experiencing not pushing in either direction. So let's look at what these other directions were for a minute. Over here was unwholesome. Mind states. And that had tension. And aversion and there was reaction happening here and this was a a pushing where you're pushing away And over here in the other side, I mean, there was a wholesome and there was less tension instead of aversion, there was attachment. And you could call this a reaction also. But it was a pulling. A pulling to, a pulling to the three. And actually what this ends up being is like, oh, it's operating kind of like a pendulum because this piece is hanging down like this. And it wants to land on the six, which would be, it would mean that Sarma gets to the point where he has the perfect conditions to fall into um, cessation. This is where the perfect conditions are so you could fall into it when the strong equanimity is here. And I maybe could take this, this is where you fall into it. You have to have the strongest equanimity and then we ha I had to create the seven enlightenment factors because they all have to be completely aligned. And so I'm gonna make them purple, okay? So here underneath, whoops, I ended up with blue and I don't know why there. I want blue, I want purple. And, and this is like, um, you know, this book, 
<laughs> You're paying attention to it, right? Investigation. Energy. Joy. Tranquility. Collectedness. Wisdom. Oh, this is equanimity, isn't it? Equanimity. Right. Pekka. Okay. Now, what's happening with this? Um, all these pieces are in here. This is like a book of the seven enlightenment factors. Oh, I didn't leave enough bottom at the bottom, did I? <laughs> I'm going to run out of space. I'll have to do it on the right side. Okay. And what's going on over here is an automatic, automatic mindfulness. And Sarma, that's when you don't have anything to do with thinking anything of a questioning anything anymore. And your mind is just paying attention to watching and that's all. Okay. It's your automatic mindfulness. That's what this is. Okay. And this is all perfectly lined up. And what happens when that happens is there's a space below that isn't there. So underneath this box, I have to show you. I'm going to have to show you on the right side. But actually, <laughs> this is, I, I messed up my diagram. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So that's where this cessation happens. The cessation. And everything, is, it's imploding. Now, of course, it's the total contraction in cessation. There's your cessation. Then, when cessation happens, actually, this one has to do with, well, what is cessation? It, cessation actually is, there's no perception, feeling, or consciousness briefly. No, cessation, feeling, or consciously inside here. There's not, not, not a nothing, okay? And then after the cessation, um, okay, what else, the other point to remember about this is there is a, when cessation occurs, the brain goes, um, there's, it's a blank past, future, and there's just present on pause. But these two, past and future, have essentially been wiped. And then I don't want the problem with talking about this is this is not a brain wipe. Okay. It's different. A brain wipe wipes out who the person is with all their memories. They don't have any identity when they come back. It's all like that. Okay. This is not a brain wipe. So I try to come up with another. There is just a blank on the past and a blank on the future. So when, when you come out of this, this is cessation. And when you come out of this, so maybe we should go up here to make you come out of it. 
this is what happens here. Okay, and then what happens when all of this is happening, there's no perception, feeling, or consciousness in the cessation. When you turn back on, okay, well, we should do this better. Wait a minute. We have to show the little dew drops, don't we? Okay, this is like when this is coming back on. Okay, there are these little drops that happen. We'll make them little gold colored ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And what happens up there is I'm going to make it like, huh? Where am I going to make it? We'll make it cool. And we'll make it to explode this way. And this is Nibbana. And Nibbana, what it is, is you, it, you turn back on. Remember I said there's no perception, feeling, consciousness. You turn back on. And as you turn back on, this right here is cognition coming back on. That's what that line is, the 12 links. They come back on. And when this first happens to you, you can't barely see this. You might see dew drops. You might see little pin lights. But when you've done it a number of times, okay, then it gets more and more clear that these are coming back on. But at the first time, you're kind of shocked at what's happening and you don't know what's happening, but you're coming back on. You're turning back on. So it's like coming out of like if you were in an accident and you had a tree on top of you like I did and I was going out of consciousness into con out of consciousness and into conscious unconsciousness back and forth. You can tell when you're coming out and going in, falling in and coming out and falling in and coming out. Only if you know what you're looking for, you'll see something that comes back on. And this, the Nibbana itself, what is it? The question that started this whole development of this whole drawing of this thing, you know, what is this? This is Nibbana. This is Nibbana. But what is it showing you? What is actually happening? Is your brain is turning back on. But we have experiences that we go through with changes in the way that our sense bases are operating. And we wanted to explain, I wanted to try to have a way of explaining to you what is happening. The reason that you're having that kind of those kinds of changes occurring with your sense organs is because there is no perception, feeling, consciousness here, and there's a complete shutdown, okay? And when it shuts down, when you initially come through Nibbana and come out the other side, you really are present time debased. You're, you're present time. So now when this happens, and this is present time, when you come back, present time, and it's very clean, very, very clean. Now, over here in this drawing, this is actually, it's swinging like a pendulum. And you start out, you drift towards unwholesome doubt and you swing back your intention is to come back here and keep practicing, but it usually swings over here some and it keeps swinging. And if you allow pendulum to just swing long enough, eventually it will come down to the six. And that's what's happening to you. This is what's happening at the six. Everything, this is becoming totally balanced. There's no managing it anymore it's automatically the automatic mindfulness going on with balanced investigation energy joy tranquility collectedness and equanimity and you're able to just watch and when this the the shutdown when this gets all balanced this piece here gets completely balanced that is basically where 
there is a, um, everything just goes dark and everything just stops right here. And that's when you're falling into, that's when this is happening. You're falling into this and then it comes out. So how fast does this happen? Hmm. <laughs> I think most of us would agree that if it happened the first time it happens, that this happens like in a, almost a split second. It's, it's a few seconds that it's happening and you're not sure what's happening unless you've had enough education as to what this is about and how it's operating. But what I'm showing you jibes pretty well with research in what's happening. And, and seeing what's happening. The only place there's a few questions is that in the text themselves, they say perception and feeling ceases, okay? But the first time that happens, consciousness is really gone. And it seems the only place I can relate to anything like this happening in my entire life is when I was going unconscious and coming out and coming out. And, and going in and coming out and going in and coming out. It's the only thing I can compare this to, I can point to in my whole life, except for what happened afterwards was completely different, completely different. But remember when that happened, I had no, no real education about this yet. It happened in um, 2000 and 2001 on the first mountain where we were located. Okay, and 2002 was the first time anything like this happened to me. And I couldn't understand, I was always questioning, all these years questioning, well, what is it that happens to us here in this level, in, the, in this level here is what is so fascinating is when this happens, and then you come out, okay? When you're coming back into present time, your, your sense doors, that's what is so interesting. What is happening to your sense doors? And how does it happen that, 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 that's, that that's like that? And the answer to it is that you've been cut off from the past and the future briefly. You're totally clean. That was one of the conditions for falling into this whole thing, yeah? That's, that's what we look at and say, that must be what this was. 